zero water. And then what I do is I add about 1.5 cc's of lidocaine with a little epinephrine, one to 100,000, right before I do the procedure. You don't want to shake it, you want to swirl it, and then you go ahead and draw it up. So you, just to reemphasize, you want to reconstitute this night before. And it's, it's stable, quote unquote, for 72 hours after. I don't have any experience using it longer than that afterwards. The injection technique, stay in the subcutaneous plane. This is so important again. You want to cross hatch in those areas, and you're really not, unlike all the other fillers, this is not a filler, it's a volumizer. You're not really seeing what you're doing, you're just sort of estimating what you want, the areas, and then calculating those numbers and saying if you have like uh, five cc's of this, you want about two cc's in this cheek, two cc's here, and maybe you know, 0.5 in the, each jawline, for example. So just estimate your volumes and put the volume in symmetrically. That's all you got to do with this. And what a good, good rule of thumb the company mentioned to me is that the swelling that you get at the end with about a 5 cc dilution is what it will look like after about three treatments. Remember that what this is doing, the product, is it's growing your collagen out. And so you're going to have this wonderful result for about a day or two and it's going to go away. And the other key with this is you want to, what I, it's easy for patients to remember this, what I call a 3-3-3 rule, which is you've got to distribute the product through massage. You put a little cream on your hands and you massage into that area for about three minutes, uh, three times a day for three days. That just makes sure the product is in the right place. Um, the benefits really are that it's great for really extensive panfacial loss. The limitations, and I really honestly don't use the product anymore, and the reason is that there are limitations. You can't put it in certain parts of the face. Uh, you can do it in a depot fashion in the upper face. I've just seen some problems, in my, in, not in my hands fortunately, but in my colleagues' hands, and I just don't think it's predictable as much as other products are in the, in the very sensitive periorbital region. Um, fillers are an immediate gratification kind of thing, and the problem with this is you've got to wait and wait and wait for it to come back, uh, for, for that product to show up, and it's, it is expensive when you add everything together. So that's just my, again, my feeling about this. It's not to say if, if you're getting great results, fantastic. I just don't particularly care for the product. Um, there is a risk of nodules. I've had a couple of them. Um, you just break them up, and they, they should, over time, just start to uh, dissipate. This is an example of just some panfacial uh, uh, sculpture uh, treatments. So let's just summarize in an in encapsulated format what we're, what we're going to talk about here. The, the reason hyaluronic acid is great is that it's biocompatible, it's reversible, and those are the two things that are, and it's also easily brand recognized out there. The drawbacks is that sometimes it goes away in a few weeks, goes away in a few months, and it doesn't last as long as a patient expected. Um, when we talk about the properties of hyaluronic acid, you're going to hear that there's going to sometimes, there's, a hydro, there's always a hydrophilic element where there's more immediate swelling for a few days before it dissipates. And the great thing is I use it everywhere. And the only contraindication is an allergy. But again, if that should be encountered, you can reverse it with vitrace or hyaluronidase. Hydroxyapatite, it's great because in most patients it's long lasting, lasting maybe eight months to a year in some, not, in some static regions of the face like the nose, you could actually push up to 18 months to two years. Uh, the, it's, irreverse, it's really irreversible as a drawback compared to hyaluronic acid. So if you're just starting your injectable practice, I would highly recommend starting with hyaluronic acid and get your feet wet before you move to radius, although radius is a very easy thing to inject. And then some of the new techniques of sw swishing with lidocaine that I use now for hand injections is great. The contraindications just to emphasize are periorbital and lips. And then in terms of polylactic acid, again, I, I honestly think there's some limitations uh, for the product in certain areas, so I'm not excited to use it because it's also a bit on the expensive side for my patients. Um, how I do it, I'm going to get more into this very soon in the next talk, but basically I use hyaluronic acid as my mainstay because I can convert to fat grafting, which is what I principally do in my practice. I really use calcium hydroxyapatite more for hands or for people that are not candidates for fat grafting, for either they have no donor supply or they don't want to spend the money. Uh, and poly L lactic acid, I really don't use anymore in my in my practice, mm -hmm. unless someone really wants it. This is my book on fat grafting that came out in January, and I don't have any business cards. But if you have any questions for me that you want to send me afterwards, just email me at Dr. Lamb at lambfacialplastics.com. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> oh. Do you want?